message, God is with us. And we can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have made it about another quarter, brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to invite you to stand. And we are just going to give God praise that we have come to the end of the second quarter. You know, the Christ's brethren did not even live through the first quarter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. the end, we are reviewing all the lessons that 
day for 12 weeks. And today our scripture text is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. If we have read say, we will give a, just a quick highlight. Memory verse comes to us from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1. And this is what Paul says. I, therefore, the prisoner, this is how, I mean, look at how um, Paul, such a great writer, such a great apostle, we would say. But look at the adjective that he is using to describe himself. He says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Don't bring the word prisoner. We know what that suggests. A prisoner is not free to do what he or she wants to do. You're at the mercy of the person in charge. The person tells you where to go and you have to go. The person tells you where to sit. Just once the person gives the command, you have to do it. And that's how Paul is saying we should see ourselves completely given over to God. And he's saying, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you and begging you, all the persons who would have listened then and now, that he walk worthy of the vocation, vocation sorry, wherewith he are called. Now, vocation, Christianity, this is our profession. This is our lifestyle. This is we are. We are first, or we should be first, children of God, and then we are students or a, a doctor, lawyers, teacher, vendor, whatever profession um, we take on in this earth. We are first and foremost children of God. And the pride that we take in our jobs, Paul is saying that we should take even greater care with our walk that we have with God. We should not treat it with scant regard. We should see this as something worthy, profitable, worthwhile, something that should be treasured. And because it's something that should be treasured, we are going to do everything in our power to ensure that the relationship is water, the relationship is maintained, and as we go throughout the lesson, the quarterly, the, 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 the previous lessons, would have um, prepared us as to what to do to ensure that we walk worthy of the vocation. And so we go to this scripture reading. Do we have any um, person that read the scripture throughout the week and you want to give a quick highlight on it? While you look and think about it, when, when I look at the, uh, the scripture reading, as I open to the scripture reading, verse 1, even though it's at the beginning, but it shouts out at the brethren in the sense where Paul said to Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong. And he did not leave it at the point that you should be strengthened amid the challenges um, that you will be faced with as a young minister. He said, be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. So, Timothy and we are encouraged to be strengthened in a power that is not of this world. And we know that grace has to do with unmerited favor. It is something that we do not deserve. It is something that we did not work for. But just as we were saved by grace, Jesus seeing it fit to love us enough to come and die for our sins, Paul said to Timothy, stand in that grace. That grace that is able to keep you in the darkest of time. Remember when Paul was going through, we the Bible did not specifically state what Paul's suffering was, but we know he had a suffering. And 
problems. Decisions that we would have made that if it weren't for the Holy Spirit guiding us, if it weren't for us obeying what God told us to do from the Word, probably we would not be here today. So we know that it is based on what Timothy says there in the study, it's important that we dig into the Word. And not just that, he says, a work man. Mean you don't have to be ashamed. Because when we get into God's Word, the Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. And the Holy Spirit will bring line upon line, precepts upon precepts. So here and it's there and it's open everything. Just like the builder who constructed this building, beautiful building, can be proud of the work he did. It's not me, everything is in line, set up. It's the same thing. Remember, the Paul said earlier, this is our profession. When we stand, when we open our mouth, when the word of God comes out of our mouth, is it beneficial to someone? Can they learn from what we are saying? Or we leave them confused? When we open our mouth and we say we speak the word of God, is somebody feeling cursed or are they feeling blessed? All that will happen when we study from the word and in Hebrews chapter 4, it says that the word of God is more powerful. So when we stand as a sword man, we are wielding the sword that can destroy the enemy, or we can stand and allow the enemy to destroy us. Everything that we need, brethren, it is in the word that we are going to find. We get victory from the word. We are defeated when we don't know the word. We will go on to go ahead for another time. Paul said he's a prisoner of the Lord. When you study the word, you make the decision to, to study. That is, by faith, you decided that I will study the word and um, give myself time to study the word. Amen. When you study the word, the word then um, takes away your living. It starts to hold you. So you make the decision to study, but then it holds you captive. And that's why Paul said it's for Christian word of the word. Therefore, the word itself is holding him from himself, from doing as he pleases. So as he reads it, he says, okay, then I just can't do this because I don't know through the word that this should not be done. So he now holds him Christian against himself. He said, he, that's why I said that when I think the book, then he will present himself. But the word now is, is always keeping him in check. Because he now knows the world, he now knows his purpose. Because that's another thing that's keep kept him in check. And he was saying it also in second, the first Timothy 4. May let not the gift the first word in that is in thee, which was in thee by prophecy with the laying on, laying on of the hands of the Christian victory. And meditate upon this thing, use thyself what it in them, that the prophet thing may appear to all, take it unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue them for a week so, for a week so, for a week this thou shalt not save thyself and then that hear thee. So he was also saying the word itself, and, uh, with both 
unite with your with your with your your your, your mandate makers. Uh, yes, we hold you captive because you know that you are you are a mandate, you have a, a, a purpose, and the Lord knows to guide you in that direction. Amen.
So if the yeah, so if the if, 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 if the mind is serving one, then if the mind, whoever is in charge of the mind, that's who you are serving. So if the is in charge of the mind, then you are serving. See? And if the, uh, if the Holy Spirit is in charge, is the head of the mind, then you are serving God. Yeah. Yes, but, but drawn away, James said, we are drawn away by the 